So you get on Drag Race season three. Mm -hmm. How did that come to be? Did you get a phone call? Was the phone call like, oh, yes. we need you, we want you? Mm, yes. Yeah, it was a phone call. At the time, my focus in my life was on being a makeup artist. As most people mm -hmm. know, I was working for America's Next Top Model. And um, America's Next Top Model had actually just ended for me. And I had to move back to L.A. And I started working very closely with Adam Lambert uh, while he was doing his thing after just being on American Idol. We had just done a shoot at Griffith Park uh for a song called if i had you which was part of his first album and we shot a night scene in griffith park and it was like a rave scene and everyone was like partying and doing stuff in this in in the forest essentially so night shoot started at 5 p.m and i got home the next day at about 7 7 30 a.m finally fell asleep at about 8 a.m which is when i received a phone call from matthew and Matthew says to me, um, honey, where have you been? We've been trying to call you like for like all day. Like, where have you been? How come you haven't answered? Uh, this is flip phone time. No, no text. Right. So I, uh, I was like, I'm sorry. I was on, I was on a night shoot. Um, he's like, well, somebody needs, somebody wants to talk to you. The next person who gets on the phone is RuPaul. And RuPaul says, hi, honey, um, how you doing? And I was like, oh, I just finished a night shoot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, great, great. So listen, I have a question for you. Are you interested in doing the show? I was like, what show? And she's like, Drag Race. And I was like, well, what would you like me to do for it? Do you want me to do like makeup? And she's like, no. She's like, do you want to participate in it? Do you want to, do you want to compete in it? And I was like, um, it was eight o'clock in the morning. I had a half hour of sleep. And I was like, well, gosh, I'm like, I don't know. And in my mind, like all of these things are racing through my brain. Um, at the time, being on reality TV was not the T. You know, it was kind of like it was a little bit on the garbage side. Yeah. And so I was really focused on my makeup career. And I was like, I don't know. Yes. No. And she's like, listen, it's it. The, the answer is either yes or no. And you have to tell me now. And I said yes to it. And that's how it happened. Wow. I am the only person on RuPaul's Drag Race that never auditioned. Book. Well, now I'm telling the whole thing. Fuck I love fuck. it. It's iconic. But, you know, I've told the story many times before, and I just think, I think it's, it's, it really had nothing to do. I mean, uh, some, some people who have heard the story would believe that, you know, I was, I was immediately chosen to be the winner. And I don't think so. I think what was needed at the time at, on season three was they needed other, other voices of drag, other, yes. of, other opinion, points of view of drag to be on the show. And I was immediately invited because I was local. I was familiar. I had already worked with, with uh, Matthew and I knew Rue. We were familiar with one another. But I don't think that I was immediately uh, imagined as the winner. I think I was just kind of thrown in there to kind of change the game a little bit and to, and to bring a different point of view of drag rather than just what was already shown in the first two seasons. I actually didn't even think that I was going to last that long. I thought I was going to probably go about halfway, if not sooner, because I was, uh, or I am a very, um, I'm an easy person to work with, but I have ideas mm -hmm. and, and when, and when those, and, and when my creativity or my ideas are disrupted, um, I'm probably just going to walk out on it. Yeah. You're not feeling. And in, in, yeah, instead, instead it kind of worked in a different way. And by the time I was like, you know, part of the final like six, I realized, oh my God, I'm actually here and I have to really, really, really do this. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it worked in my favor. And you, you had a lot of moments in Untucked that I thought were hilarious. I was laughing. I recently rewatched season three with all the Untucks in it. And I was like, you girls were not afraid to speak your mind. Um, no, we weren't. We weren't. Um, also, you know, I'm not trying to like, you know, blame, blame it on the edit, but the edit has a lot to do with what those old untucks look like because they actually coached us on a lot of things. So for instance, they would go, there was, you know, two, two or three cameras, one, uh, director, and they would say, okay, 
So after we'd done our, our, our conversation, they'd be like, okay, now I need all of you to look like someone just walked in the room and farted. And so we would all go, <laughs> you know, now, okay, great, great. Now we need you to act like uh, you've run out of your cocktail. So just shake your glass and give us a pissy face. And we all, you know, tinkle our glass and look at it. So there was, there was things that they had us that do were edited, that yeah. were edited in. And I actually loved it. I think that it actually added a lot of humor to it and a lot of... um it just made Untucked so much more interesting. Yes. And I also think that you guys being in these very small, like, offices, like, it literally was like an office <laughs> that they, like, transformed into the Interior Illusions Lounge. But being in such a small, confined space, I think, yeah. made it made it a moment, too. Because now they're just yeah. in the workroom. They're used to the workroom. Right. And there's not really any drama. Right. The Interior Illusions Lounge was also fully equipped with alcohol because Absolute Vodka was our sponsor at the time. Mm -hmm. So as part of the background decor, they actually had real bottles of like Absolute Vodka that were styled behind us. And um, I mean, I'm not going to say it's a Heather thing, but it was definitely a Heather thing because <laughs> Carmen Carrera would, you know, when the cameras weren't looking she would take one of the bottles and hide it under <laughs> one of the interior illusion sofas and then the next morning we would go in and have our sound packs put on in the interior illusions lounge uh -huh. so we would have our breakfast in the interior illusions lounge carmen would reach under the un, under the uh, sofa then put it into my backpack and it would end up in one of our suitcases usually mine so we stole um absolute vodka actual vodka from the interillusion set. Well, you probably needed it. We did, yeah. That that was a stressful time. Yeah, and we would just kind of put it in our soda cans and just like <laughs> pretend like and just get drunk, <laughs> BTS. And you were the last season to do a recorded finale, right? Right, right. So your reaction was real. That was a real reaction, which I'm kind of like, God, I wish I could have faked a reaction because I was like, yeah. <laughs> my whole face is like because I was so excited and um yeah and then uh Perez Hilton came actually there, there's a RuPaul just came out with a book and I yeah the the shade of it all I yeah, think, and, yeah. I, and I just read all of I, I, what I'm repeating to you now is actually in the book um maybe not the part about RuPaul calling me herself but um but yeah uh it was definitely um wait what what were we talking about I'm stoned <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about your when and how it was recorded. Oh, yeah. How it was recorded. Yeah. So what, had, what happened was um, Perez Hilton, which this is this is how fucking long ago it was. Yeah. Perez Hilton was still a thing. And when he was drawing the little stuff on people's uh -huh, pictures. Uh-huh. And Perez Hilton had announced that I won RuPaul's Drag Race through a leak even before, I believe, the cast was announced. So, I mean, I mean, it kind of like put a trajectory on me. Mm -hmm. People started to pay attention to me, but it didn't really work in the in the production's favor. And since that moment, uh, Sharon Needles was the first one to have a live audience mm -hmm. and to have to fake the, the win. Yeah. And you had you had the privilege of knowing that you won, whereas girls now have to wait like a year. <laughs> they do. They do. I mean, I really sat on a secret for a whole year. Um, I think the. I didn't even tell my family. Wow. Um, I really kind of kept it a secret because I uh, because it was sacred to me. It was mm -hmm. like, oh my god, I I did something. I won something. I I did really good. And actually, you know what? I think I told Adam Lambert because I went back to work after this because I had to leave work with him mm -hmm. to film Drag Race. I had to say, hey, they called me. I have to be on Drag Race, so I have to leave you for like a month and a half if I'm there for the entire time. So when I came back to, to work with him, I think while, while I was doing his makeup, I told him, I think I was like, yeah, girl, I fucking won that shit. And then he told press Hilton. I was... <laughs> <laughs> no, you had a 10 year, about a 10 year stint between all stars. I mean, between season three and all star seven. Mm -hmm. Was there a point that you decided that you wanted to do it? Because I feel like you win. You uh -huh. may not want to go back because of the fact of you may not win. You may win. You're putting yourself all back out there. It's a totally different world now. Social uh -huh. media is crazy. Did you 
ever second guess that? No, 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 not at all. No, as uh, you know, it was all happening kind of towards the end of COVID. Mm -hmm. So I had spent a lot of time at home um, doing what I do, which is I, I honestly just I sit and create and I make things all the time outfits mm -hmm. and so i had like made like you know four or five outfits just for fun just just waiting for this this pandemic to end and one day be in a club to perform in, in one of these outfits and then when the call came i was like absolutely we've been stuck at home and i am ready for this and i'd watch you know so many of my friends have the opportunity to go on on all stars because they didn't win mm -hmm. manila was on it twice you know, um, so many people. And I was like, wow, I, you know, maybe being a winner isn't such a wonderful thing because you never get to be seen again. You're, mm -hmm. People assume that just because you're the winner, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're doing whatever you're doing. But um, it, the invitation to come back was definitely like exciting for me. I was like, okay, y'all want, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's, let's do this. I've sewn outfits for the last mm -hmm. few months. Let's get some more outfits ready. I was ready for it. It was like it was like 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 going to war. Not going to war. No, it wasn't war. It was really about <laughs> it was really more about like like here's my chance to get to present myself to a whole a demographic of people who had never even seen season three. Mm -hmm. And some of them are quite young. And their first experience with Drag Race started in like, you know, season nine yeah. or something so um so i just took it as an opportunity to be like hey i'm i'm here like you know let's keep these gigs going i'm fucking fierce as hell yeah and uh and i'm gonna show you what i got <laughs>